Mr. Yeager for chemistry. Looking at another major technique we need to get used to is dimensional analysis. This is going to be huge when we get to the mole and stoichiometry and solutions, molarity, all sorts of things. All right. So this is a technique that we have to really feel get comfortable with. Uh, there's a couple ways to basically write it down. It's all the same technique, but there are different methods in terms of how it could possibly look in the end. So I'll kind of show you a couple different ways to do it, but it's, it is a multi, it can be a multi-step problem. So we just have to take our time and think about things I'm going to keep saying is where are you coming from? Where are you going to, to help you figure out the units involved? It's a lot of changing units is what we're basically playing around with here. Okay. So the way to learn this is to do problems. That's really what I need to show you more than anything else. Okay, I'm going to pick a different color here. All right. So what we have is I want to say somebody measured a distance of five kilometers. I want to know how many miles that is. If you're a runner, you probably already know what the, how much mileage it is. It's going to be 3.1. But why will it be that? Why will it come out to that? Okay. So the way you always start these problems is you write down what you start with. Write down what you start with. I, I cannot stress that enough. Write down with what you start. So five kilometers, okay? And I'll show you kind of a couple techniques that people use in terms of writing it. I mainly go with this first one. I, it's something called the train tracks. It was how I was taught it too when I was in honors chem class, okay? So five kilometers. You can also write it this way if you want, five km and then, multi, and it, oops, see I'm already writing it wrong. That's why I don't do it this way. Five km times and then draw a little line, okay? So. You write five kilometers. There's nothing on the bottom because there's no unit on the bottom. We'll get to that in a moment. There can be something in this bottom box, okay? But an empty box just means one. That's basically what that means, okay? All right, I wanna change it to miles. Now in this case, since we're changing from metric to English units, I would give you the conversion. It turns out that one mile is equal to 1.61 kilometers, okay? 1.61 kilometers. So how do I use that then? This is how I try to help everybody. What you're coming from goes on the bottom. What you're coming from goes on the bottom. So I'm in kilometers, so I'm coming from kilometers. What I'm going to goes on top. So coming from on the bottom, going to on the top. And then you just write in the numbers of the conversion factor. So one mile, 1.61, okay? Now that I'm in the unit that I want, I'm done. Okay, in this case, this is a one-step problem. Down here, if I write it with the bottom way, it would be uh, 1.61 kilometers, one mile. But we're gonna do the exact same thing. Then what we do is you basically, any number up top, we're gonna multiply by and any number on the bottom, we're gonna divide by. And you could do that in your calculator. Now again, you don't necessarily have to do five times one. I hope you don't do that. Five times one divided by 1.61. This comes out to guess what? 3.1 miles, okay? 3.1 miles. Now, because I just went over it in a prior video, since I'm doing sig figs, we'd actually have to round this down to just three because you started off with only one sig fig. So if I do a 5.0 kilometer run, it would be 3.1 miles. If I say a five kilometer run, I'm saying only three miles, I know. I'm a runner too, and I don't agree with that. It's definitely 3.1, okay? But that's it. What you're coming from, what you're going to, okay? And then it's, I, I always think it's a good idea to cross out the units. If your unit shows up on top and in the bottom row, we cross it out, okay? We cross that on out, all right? You can only cross out one though. Again, we'll run into that if we need to with squares and all that other stuff. All right, so three days, how many seconds? Okay, if I have three days, that's what I start with. Okay, three days. All right, this one though, you should be able to do in your head. I doubt you know how many seconds there are in a single day. So what should I change days into? I'm gonna change it into hours and then I'll change hours into minutes, and then I'll change minutes into seconds. I know all those conversion factors. So let's use my thought process. 
I'm in days, so that's what I'm coming from. And I'm going to first change to hours. I'm not going to jump to seconds. Well, in one day, there's 24 hours. OK, next. Now I'm, I can cross out days. Now I'm in hours. I'm coming from hours going to minutes. There's one hour, 60 minutes. Please don't get that backwards. I get people all the time that write 60 hours in one minute. That's a very, very, very long minute. Okay, hours are gone, minutes, seconds, 60 seconds, one minute, cross out the minutes. You are now in seconds. Now all I have to do is what I say. On top, I multiply every single time. On the bottom, I divide, but it's just ones on the bottom. So who cares on the bottom? So three times 24 times 60 times 60 is 259200 zero, zero seconds. 259,200 seconds in three days. I'm going to be tough because I'm doing sig figs. I'd actually go ahead and round this to 300,000 seconds. Again, that's not very accurate. But if I had to do sig figs, I'd have to only keep the first digit. And I'm going to round up because 5 is next to it, so 300,000. All right? Again, I'm more focused on the process with it. Okay? Let's try some more. So. I lived in Malawi for a little while. We used a, a, uh, the, uh, a money called the Quacha. Uh, I checked today. It said that basically there's, a th uh, there's 795 Quacha for every dollar. It wasn't that inflated when I was there. It was only 150 Quacha per dollar. All right. But this is why it's, it's, this conversion stuff is important. If you travel abroad, you want to make sure you know what your dollars, where, how far your dollar is going to go, and what it's changing into. I mean, these are things, these are calculations I was doing all the time on the fly when I needed to convert some money. Okay, so for this one, I'm starting with one thousand quacha. One thousand quacha. I'm coming from quacha, going to the dollar. What's the conversion? One dollar, 795 quacha. I'm going to divide that number. So if I have a thousand quacha and I want to change it back into US dollars, I am getting a dollar 26. Okay? <laughs> Pretty crazy. Pretty crazy. Now, what if you had to then travel over to Tanzania? Okay? And you had ten dollars, but you had to first convert it into quat. Like the thing is, you only know the conversion between Quacha and Tanzanian shillings. So how much are you going to get? So this would be $10. I start with, what am I coming from? Dollars. What do I need to go to first? I don't know what dollars to sh Tanzanian shillings are. I know what dollars to Quacha are, so I need to go to Quacha. So $1, 795 Quacha, and then I'm going to come from Quacha to Tanzanian shillings. Oops, I Tanzanian shillings. There's one Quacha, 2.92 shillings. So 10 times 795 times 2.92. I would actually get 23,214 Tanzanian shillings. You'd think that you're rich, but you only got $10 there. Okay. So. That is, again, showing you dimensional analysis in terms of what's involved. All right, I think I got one more problem, or two more problems. What if I have multiple units that I need to switch? Multiple units to switch, okay? Same idea, okay? Don't be making it more than it has to be. One mile equals 1.61 kilometers. Come back here, okay? How do I write this out? This is saying I'm going two miles per second, and I want to know how fast that is in kilometers per hour. So what I would do is I'm writing two miles over one second. Sorry, the pen's going nuts now. OK? So now I have something on the bottom. Take this one at a time. Either change miles to kilometers first or seconds to hours. I'm going to do the top. 
So I'm focusing on miles. I'm coming from miles, going to kilometers. Okay? One mile, 1.61 kilometers. That's the conversion. So now, sorry about this. So now, I'm in kilometers per second. I'm not going to multiply anything. I'm going to wait till the end. Now I'm going to work with seconds. This might look weird because you're kind of taking it the opposite way now. Since I'm coming from the bottom, seconds has to be on the top, and I'm going to minutes. And then I will go to minutes, hours. There's 60 seconds in one minute. One minute. Oh, sorry. See, I almost made the mistake. 60 minutes in one hour. And I solve. Okay? And in the end, I mean, this one just happened to be this way. I get to just multiply all the numbers. 2 times 1.61 times 60 times 60. Wow. Uh, you're going very, very fast. 11,500. And 92 kilometers an hour. That is very fast. <laughs> so I don't think you're going to be driving that fast. But it makes sense. If you're going two miles a second, that's pretty stinking amazing. Okay? But kilometers an hour. And again, I'm going to tell you from traveling abroad, I mean, in other countries, the, the speed signs are kilometers an hour. You need to recognize what you're going. Like I was surprised when I'd be in a car and I'd be going 100 kilometers an hour, and that's only like 60 miles an hour. Okay? So this is where, again, these conversions do come in handy. My very last one here, my very last one is getting us into how we might actually, well, not might, we will use this in chemistry, okay? So I wanna change something that's 30 grams per milliliters of water into moles per liter. This is getting into something way ahead that we're gonna see later on with this, okay? So I write out 30 grams per milliliter. If my pen doesn't keep on deleting stuff. Okay. I need to change milliliters to liters and grams to moles. Well, I have this conversion right here. It says 18 grams is one mole. So I'm going to go from grams to moles. And here comes the G. 18 grams, one mole. So that's all done. Now I need to change milliliters to liters, milliliters to liters. There's one liter and a thousand milliliters. So this would be 30 times 1,000 divided by 18. This would be 1,667 moles per liter. Okay? Is what we're looking at there. Okay? So that's just another version of it. In the end, I mean, we can make up whatever conversion we want. The process of this will always continue to be the same. The last thing I just want to quickly point out is for that last one. How did I know that there was a thousand milliliters in liters? Okay, this hopefully is review. Hopefully you know the whole like King Henry died by drinking chocolate milk or some sort of anagram. Anagram, is that what it is? Whatever it is with it. Okay, so you just have to remember how to change these kilo, hecta, deca, base unit, deci, centi, milli. Okay. Again, one of the ways you can do this is just the decimal method, where as you're moving from base to milli, you're moving your decimal point to the right. If you're moving from base to deca, you're moving your decimal point to the left. So again, it's just telling you which way to move your decimal point. If you're going from kilo down, the decimal point moves to the right. If we're going from milli up, your decimal point needs to move to the left, making your number smaller and smaller. Okay? So that's where I got the idea that if I have one milliliter and I want to make it liters, okay? or one mil, uh, sorry, I did it differently. If I had one liter and I wanted to make it milliliters, I did one and then I moved it one, two, three times. One, two, three times. So a thousand. One liter equals a thousand milliliters. All right, so 
that's a lot of the skills we need to be involved with. It just takes practice, 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 and it'll hopefully even make more sense when we implement it in our chemistry stuff, and we will go from there. Again, guys, thank you.